crisp as red. A S M R. Hello there. It's Emma here with another video. I hope you're well. This time, I'm going to show you how to make grasshopper pie. It's been just over a year since I promised to do this, so I'm looking forward to it. I hope you enjoy it. The recipe we're going to follow is from this book here. It's Kitchen by Nigella. Recipes from the heart of the home. one of my favourite cookbooks and I've made the grasshopper pie many many times I have one I made earlier I'll show you in a second so here is the recipe read a little bit from here for you. I was watching an episode of Glee on TV and one of the characters ate her way through four slices of grasshopper pie. That's easily done. Any food scenes on film and television make me miss important plot lines. So involved am I in what's being cooked or eaten? but I entirely overreact to this one. I knew I had to cook such a pie even before I had any idea what was in it. There it is. And there's another page. of the different steps in making the grasshopper pie. The ingredients there. And all the steps. So, before I show you how to make it and go through all of the ingredients, I will quickly show you one I made earlier. This is a smaller version than the one we're going to make, as I split it into two to make two smaller pies, but we're going to make one big one. As you can see, it's quite thin and it's still sprinkles. It smells delicious but I won't tell you what it smells like yet because you don't know what goes in it. I'm going to show you that in a minute. So let's come in closer and you can see how to make grasshopper pie. Here we have all of the ingredients. This is our working table for today. For the base, we need 300 grams of bourbon biscuits, and those are here. This 
is a ball pen It's two chocolatey layers of biscuit with chocolate cream inside This is for our base Then we need 500 grams of good quality chocolate and that's dark chocolate Here I have a whole bar of dark chocolate It's fair trade by fair trade as much as I can. I believe this bar is 70% dark chocolate, 70% cocoa and about 50 grams is I'd say four of these squares yeah. so this is our ingredient is 50 grams of soft unsalted butter which is here and the best way to know if it's soft enough to bake with is just press your finger and you make a little indentation then it's soft enough this one has been out in the warm for a little bit longer so it's ultra soft as you can tell <laughs> so that's the base and for the filling, we need 150 grams of mini marshmallows and I have them in a bowl here Covered in cling film very small and squidgy <laughs> well 
we're going to melt these so it helps if they're tiny means that they melt quicker Also for the filling, we need 125 millilitres of full fat milk, that's what we have in here. spoons of crammed mint crammed mint minty liqueur and we need again four tablespoons of cacao creme de cacao and this is the white version it needs to be white so that it doesn't alter the We also need some double cream, which I have here, nicely chilled in this jar. It's 375 millilitres. And if you would like your pie to be more green, deeper green. You can use a few drops of green food colouring. Sometimes I add it and sometimes I don't. It's up to you. either have one deep 25 centimeter fluted tart tin which is this or you can have two smaller ones I sometimes make a large one and I sometimes make two little ones because you can actually freeze this pie so if I make two small ones then I can freeze one of them a friend. I usually give one away actually. I'll have someone round and we polish it off in one go. So 
we're going to make the base so the base as we said consists of the bourbon biscuits and the butter and the chocolate and what we need to do is process them all together until they form a lumpy mixture and that's our base and then we press it into the tin so I'm not going to process anything now because it's noisy I have some here I already made and we're going to press it into the base of the tin use a fork. This is the consistency you need it to be. nicely towards the edges then I'll use my fingers to press it down and of course I've washed my hands because we want to make sure that we are hygienic when we bake like so around the outside to compact the mixture down that makes for a nice thin and crispy base this in the fridge or somewhere cold just to harden before we add our topping okay right next we're going to make our topping so the first thing that we need to do is add our marshmallows 
into a pan and then we're going to add our milk marshmallow, the milk, like so. Now I have a camping stove here and I'm going to turn that on and whilst the marshmallow is melting I'm not going to speak I need to turn the volume down on the sound of the stove. It's a gas stove and it may be quite noisy. And if you've fallen asleep now, I don't want to wake you up. So, let's do that. Once we have melted all of our marshmallows, we should have this beautiful gloopy, squidgy mixture. Just like this. And what we need to do is transfer it into another bowl. So that we can add our creme de menthe and our creme de cacao. See, I'm getting professional now. Now what we need to do is add our booze. Four tablespoons. Smells amazing, by the way. And our creme de cacao. Two, 
three and four. Okay. And then we just stir it through. all mixed in together. The most important thing to do now is to cool this down because we're going to add it to our cream and if we don't cool it then it will heat up the cream and curdle thus ruining our mixture or topping, which we don't want to do. So I'm going to leave this now to cool. Our next job is to take our cream and whisk it until it forms nice soft peaks. So let's do that. Here's our cream. a hair in my cream. Never mind. There we are. Here's my whisk and I'm going to give it a really good vigorous whisk. Now I know lots of people like to use electric whisks but I prefer to do it myself. I think that if I've worked a little bit harder making my cakes or whatever it is, then I deserve to eat it. And I like to be in touch with the food and just work with it. So I'm going to start whisking now. It will be fast and it will be loud. So I'll see you at the end. Okay. And here it is. Nice and soft. And look a bit stiff. Holding soft peaks, just like the recipe says. There we are. Now. We're going to add our cooled green mixture and we're going to do this using the whisk. We're going to just whisk nice and slowly. Okay. I'll do this over here so that you can see. This is where we add our green food colouring if we wish. I'm going to add on this occasion a couple of drops. One, two, 
not too much and I'm going to stop using the whisk as well and start again using my wooden spoon just to stir it through smells really minty and fresh it's such a lovely dessert because it's minty and it makes your mouth feel fresh and it's not too stodgy not too filling nice and light so that means you can have a bigger piece. So there we are. There's our green mixture. And in the book, it looks a lot greener. And I've made this recipe so many times that I'm of the opinion that <laughs> The picture in the book is actually enhanced somewhat in Photoshop. I think that's more to do with the photography than it is to do with the green food colouring. All we need to do now is pour our mixture into the pie and finish it off with a sprinkle and then we're done. So I'm just going to fetch my base from the fridge and we'll do that. Here it is. So let's get pouring into the tin. What we're left with here can be eaten, of course. That's often the best part of baking. So I should be digging into that shortly. But first we need to just spread our mixture around the pie. And I don't like to use a spoon because I'd rather keep all of the mixture in there now. So I just give it a wobble so that it distributes evenly. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is decorate it, and that's where our um leftover bits of bourbon come in. We just sprinkle those over the top there.
we have it all grass all the time all we need to do now is place this in the fridge for about four hours or overnight is good as well and then dig in the marshmallow will set and the pie will be nice and bouncy and squidgy and melt in the mouth I do hope you make it because it's really delicious and it's great if you have friends around if you're having a dinner party it's always good after a big meal because it isn't so stodgy and it's not so filling but it's refreshing so there we go hope you enjoyed that oh grasshopper pie you take care and I'll see you very soon <laughs>